so we got a John Deere X720 customer brought in saying that it died out on them wouldn't restart we went out to pick it up went ahead and put a jump pack on the battery it fired right up and ran fine to get it onto the trailer I've been letting it charge up a little bit because it's a brand new battery the thing was only replaced about a year ago we're gonna go ahead and diagnose this thing and figure out exactly what's going on why this thing the battery went dead and it wouldn't restart so it is kind of a common issue on these things and we'll go through from the start to finish so definitely got to be something with the charging system or the battery since the battery was replaced uh, just a few months ago I'd say it's probably not a battery issue since we use uh, the die-hard batteries they're 350 cold cranking amp really good battery but I've got it on a 10 amp charge so if we put our voltmeter to DC we're getting a little over 13 volts to the battery so that's good I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off it's dropping a little bit which it normally will but I haven't let it charge for quite a full hour, but we're going to start this thing up and figure out where the voltage goes from here. So we get no change in the DC voltage on this thing while we're running it. What that means is the charging system is bad or the battery is bad. Uh, something on this thing is not allowing the unit to get the battery charged back upright. So uh, the charging system on this is pretty simple. It's, it's basically just the battery. It's got a wire going uh, from the uh, starter here back to the regulator which in turn goes to the alternator um, or stator whatever you'd like to call it which is under the flywheel there so pretty simple system you will need a wiring diagram or a little bit of basic knowledge I'll kind of show you how to do that without a diagram it's it's pretty easy to diagnose so uh, without any you know other distractions such as mice chewing on wires or strange things like that this should take care of all the issues. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and test the output from the stator itself. So you've got a charging system on this that consists of a stator that sits right under the flywheel. So you've got to find the wires coming out to the side, whether it's this engine or any other engine. Find the wires coming from under the flywheel. This one's got a nice, easy, accessible flywheel here. Real easy to see everything. But you see these wires going to the back. It's got two wires coming out to this wiring harness, these black black wires. So if you test between those wires and you test AC voltage because it's coming out from under the stator, it's always gonna be AC voltage coming out unless there's a diode or a, uh, some sort of, of um, uh, electrode that changes it from AC to DC. So uh, normally there's nothing in line on any of these. They've got an external regulator which turns that AC voltage into DC voltage to charge the battery. So normally from a stator, depending on the brand, you'll run anywhere from 30 to 38, sometimes 43 volts coming from it. Somewhere in that, in that range is what I always look for as long as I'm in there when I'm testing it. You know the stator's good up underneath. So we're gonna start this thing up and go ahead and test, figure out what we're getting. AC voltage coming out from under the stator here and we'll go from there we'll work our way backwards to the battery so we do know the battery is good or at least we're gonna assume at this point that the battery is good so get going here. So again, that's just the two coming, coming out there from out, from out from under the stator. And right now we're getting zero volts DC, but we're going to want to go on AC. AC voltage. Fire the truck. So we're 
getting 35 volts there. AC coming out of the uh, the stator coming out from under the uh, flywheel. So we're getting 35 volts AC coming there. When that goes into the regulator, the regulator changes that into DC voltage to charge the battery. So it is not doing that. The, the stator up under here is working. It is producing voltage, but somewhere in between there and the battery, something's being lost. So we're going to go ahead and take the panel access here, take it off and get to our fuse box. You can check the fuses. I think one of them is for the charging system. We always check the fuses anyway. Put a little dielectric grease on it, especially something like this. You want to blow it all out real good. Don't want to just leave that. And on the bottom side here, that what you see there, that's your regulator. So it plugs in a wiring harness on the back side. Right into the, right into the main harness. And it takes that ac voltage from over on this side it routes it through and it creates a dc charge line coming back so that will go to again one of these fuses up here uh, make sure those are good but as long as those fuses are good then you know it is your regulator if you got one of the fuses bad replace it test again start at your battery then you can go to your alternator work your way so this uh, as long as your battery's good, you want to make sure I've turned the charger off at this point. As long as your battery's got voltage and good voltage to it, make sure that it doesn't drop if you turn off your charger or anything like that. So you should have at least 12 and a half, if not 13 volts or more come out of your battery. So if it's not at that point, you want to make sure that you service the battery or have a good jump to it when you're testing all this stuff. Otherwise, none of your information is going to be correct. It'll give you a lot of false information. You'll get weird readings out of it uh, just because of the different amounts of resistance at all these plugs and stuff. And sometimes you'll actually read voltage, other times you won't. That's where a lot of people go wrong. Uh, make sure that you keep con constant voltage to that battery. Make sure all the wires are hooked up good, everything's tight. If you've got a wire here on the starter that's gonna be feeding your unit and it's loose, you're not gonna get good voltage and a lot of times you won't get good charge at that point. So that goes for the battery also. So you want this line here, make sure, make sure all your connections are nice and tight, both at the battery, the charger, or I'm sorry, the starter, and then also the ground wire. So there's a ground wire here that goes back to the battery. Make sure that's tight at both ends. Otherwise, you're going to have electrical issues that are going to be intermittent and they're going to be hard, hard to diagnose. In this case, all we've got is a bad regulator. Flip it out real quick. Everything will be back and ready to rock. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.